What's up you guys, this is Minister Jones. I am back for our encouragement one-on-one -on -one video post. So we're still on our How to Hear From God series. We have not finished with it yet. Um, I personally feel as though this entire lesson um, that we've done thus far is definitely necessary for 2021. We need to know how to hear from God, the different ways to hear from God, and how to um, reverence Him. You know just a little bit more um and the importance of you know reverencing him but it's very important very vital that we know how to hear from god we need to be seeking every step that we take you know every step from him from the smallest thing to the biggest thing we need to be holy spirit led we need to be um right there with god in a realm seeking him seeking his direction seeking his way in 2021 so i appreciate the lord for um expanding the lesson the way that he has so that we can get all of this going um through 2021 learning how to hear from god and we're getting ready to finish it so make sure that you stay of course if you've missed any videos go back and watch them that's why they're there so that you can watch them at your own convenience on your own time and make sure that you share the good news with someone else we need more disciples now um, than ever, you know, in this day and time. So again, how to hear from God series. We're on chapter 12. We're almost done with the book. We're cutting edge, but we're not there yet. There's still a lot of information for us to get. So how to hear from God series, chapter 12, keep your receiver deceiver free. So your receiver is your ear and the deceiver is the enemy. So you want to keep your ears, keep your receiver, your ears, deceiver enemy free um the opening scripture is going to come from john chapter 12 verse 29 it says so the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered others were saying an angel has spoken to him that's very important we're going to find out why when we get into the lesson some people say it sounded like thunder others say that it sounded like an angel so that's very big um two parts to this part one introduction and it says to hear from God we must first believe that we can hear from him so in order to hear from God we must first believe that we can hear from him that's very important many people want to hear from God but they don't really expect to hear from him they tell others how they just can't hear from God and that he never talks to them so the first thing you must do is believe that you can hear from him you want to hear from God you don't think you can then you won't if you believe that you can and you will and don't be telling people that you just can't hear from them because you can you know you just have to believe it again going on to the next thing these people have too much static in their receivers too much static in their ears to hear him clearly their ears are jammed with too many messages coming from ungodly sources. So the people that say that they cannot hear from God, their ears are clogged up with, uh, with words from ungodly people. So, you know, that's nothing but negativity. You know, come on, you'll never hear from God. People don't hear from him for real. You know, negative, negativity. And again, you have to believe it. But if you don't believe it, you won't hear from him. Consequently, they have a hard time discerning what God is really saying to them. It doesn't do any good for God to speak to us if we do not believe we are hearing from him. The deceiver, the devil, doesn't want us to think that we can hear from God. He doesn't want us to believe, so he sends his little demons to stand around and tell us lies day and night that we can't hear from him. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is why Jesus died. Jesus said that I have to go. When he told the disciples that he had to, you know, he had to leave. And he said, if I don't go, the comforter, he won't come. Your help won't come. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. And the Holy Spirit only says what God says. So it is, it, that is one great way to hear from God. But there, as you, we went through uh, most of this lesson, we see there are plenty, plenty of ways to actually hear from God. But the Holy Spirit is the is number one. We want to make sure that He lives on the inside and that we can hear 
um, when he speaks because that is what God is telling us to do. We want to be, we're in 2021, be Holy Spirit led. Um, but we can answer. It is written, God has given me the capacity to hear and obey him. That's Psalms 40 and 6. The word declares that all believers have the capacity to hear and obey God and to be led by the Holy Spirit. So this is what the word of God says. We know that the word of God does not go out void. It does what it's sent out to do. So again, it says, but we can answer. When we go back to where the enemy sends his little demons to lie to us day and night that we can't hear from God, but we can answer. It is written. God has given me the capacity to hear and obey him. Again, Psalms 40 and 6. The word declares that all believers have the capacity to hear and obey God and to be led by his spirit, by his, by the Holy Spirit. Many people who were standing around Jesus when God spoke to him only heard what, what they thought was thunder. Remember the, the opening scripture when I said we're going to discuss it again. Many people who were standing around Jesus when God spoke to him only heard what they thought was thunder. If you are having trouble hearing from God, I encourage you to take a few moments every day and confess your faith in hearing from him. As you confess what you believe in your heart, you will develop faith and expectancy to hear him. This stuff right here is so um, lame in terms that I don't really have to break it down. But I want you to get the information and see how important it is that you are able to connect with the master. You have to be able to hear from him. You know, and especially again in this day and time because it's critical. Like we are literally in the last days. And pretty soon the trumpets are going to sound. You know, when the trumpets sound, Jesus is coming back and he's coming back to get us. And we want to want to be able to hear from him from now up until then so we can be guided in this life. And it's important to be guided by the Holy Spirit because you live your best life when you're guided by God, when he's the head, when he's leading you. You know, even when you're going through the toughest times of your life, you can have joy, you can have peace. And people will be wondering what's wrong with you knowing everything that you're going through but yet you're still serving you're still praising god you're still joyful so it's very important that you are led by the holy spirit he will protect you you know from the unknown things that you know nothing about you know that are ahead of you in front of you whatever it may be but the holy spirit is very vital very important you got to be able to hear from god um and in closing in this first part this is a confession that you can confess I hear from God. I am led by his Holy Spirit. I know my father's voice and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. I am led and guided by the Holy Spirit even until my death. God will guide me all the days of my life. He will guide me and give me the answers that I need in Jesus name. So that is a confession prayer um, that you can say. And that you can say it repeatedly if you need to. Scripture says that my sheep will know my voice. And the strangers, they will not know. They will not know. And they will not follow. They will not follow. So the Lord is saying his sheep know his voice. So in the leading scripture, when some, it says John 12 and 29. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it, that it had thundered. Jesus spoke. And, and uh, God spoke and they thought it was thunder and again scripture says Jesus, the Lord said my, my sheep will know my voice they didn't even know his voice it sounded like thunder on the other hand others were saying an angel has spoken to him so when God was speaking to Jesus you know you had some people that couldn't hear and you had others that could hear one side sounded like thunder the other side sounded like an angel. Again, scripture says, my sheep will know my voice. So we know that the ones that heard and it sounded like an angel were God's sheep. Were God's sheep. So we got to know his voice. We got to be able to discern uh, what's God and what's not. Very important. Um, part two of this, trusting God opens our receivers. 
trusting God opens our receivers. So trusting God opens our ears. If we live God's way, if we choose to serve him, we can avoid week-long wrestling matches with him. That is so profound. Again, if we live God's way, if we choose to serve him, we can avoid week-long wrestling matches matches wrestling matches with him and that's so profound because you want to be aligned with god because your will your free will what you want to do and what the lord want to do your flesh and god's will man that's something else you know you want to do what you want to do but god is telling you to do that and you're not doing what he's saying do so there's no peace and you're just struggling you're wrestling all week and you're not seeking God first about nothing. You're just doing things. And God is saying, hey, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're wrestling all week. When God is simply saying, do what I say. Obey me. You don't have to wrestle. Just obey. Walk in line with me. Again, if we live God's way, if we choose to serve him, we can avoid week-long wrestling matches with him. Wisdom tells us to let God do with us what he wants. So that we don't keep going around and around the same mountain all the time. Deuteronomy 2 and 3. I love Deuteronomy 2 and 3. We have brought up that scripture on how many times. So when you don't obey God, like the children of Israel on the mountaintop, you go around. They spent, what, 40 years up there? I think it was 40 years doing the same thing over and over again. And the Lord keeps sending you around and around until you get what he's saying to you do what he's saying do that's not what i told you to do so since you're doing the wrong thing you're just gonna keep going around in a circle doing the same thing getting the same results because you're not doing what god's saying do so you're not doing anything different you're doing everything the same you're just going around around the mountain around around the mountain some people have been circling the same obstacles and issues for 20 or 30 years but if they had simply obeyed god in the beginning the children of Israel takes me back to it. Takes me back to my own personal life too. But for a long time, I was one of those going around that mountain, going through the same thing, and really acting like I didn't know why I was going through what I was going through. But I wasn't doing anything different. I wasn't doing what God said do. So the same things kept happening to me because I kept doing the same things and I kept getting the same results. 20, 30 years, 40 years. Some of us have been doing the same thing for so long, it's just become a part of our lifestyles. And anything different, foreign, you don't want to do it. You don't want to touch it because you've been doing the same thing so long. Some of us get tired of doing the same thing and you want something different to happen, like myself, and you do something different. And change is hard, but it's worth it. And again, some people have been circling the same obstacles and issues for 20 or 30 years, but if they had simply obeyed God in the beginning, they would have moved on with their lives long ago. No matter how much we may enjoy where we are when God finds us, no matter how much we may enjoy where we are when God finds us, that's very, very profound and it's kind of funny wherever you are when God finds you and some of us might like where we are he will not let us stay there and become stagnated stuck in one place he won't do it because God never changes but he's always moving he's always doing something he's always working miracles he's always got a plan for this and a plan for that so he's always up to something we serve a God who never sleeps he never slumbers you know we can't even fathom the thoughts of God so he won't let us be stagnant he wants what's best for us he has new places to take us and new lessons to teach us he wants to keep us full of life full of growth and full of his plan God has said to us if you don't pay attention to me if you ignore me and do not give heed to my reproof this is scripture listen to this I am going to cry out to you. I'm going to warn you. I will try to help you, but if you continue to give me a deaf ear, I'm going to cry out to you. And I'm going to try to help you, but if you keep acting like you don't hear me and keep ignoring what I'm telling you to do, you will come to me in a panic. When things get bad, you're going to come to me. And when you get in trouble, 
That's Proverbs 1, 24 and 28. Read that on your own time. It's very, very interesting. And God is, God is, he's not playing in those scriptures. He's saying, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to cry out to you. I'm going to beg you to do what I say. But if you don't do what I say, if you hear my voice and you ignore me and you continue to do what you want to do, when times get rough, when 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 the um, calamity hits, everything start falling out falling out of place. When darkness hits your life, you're gonna come to me in a panic. And guess what's gonna happen when you come to him in a panic? We're gonna read on it some more. You read on it some more. As a matter of fact, Proverbs 1, 24 through 28. Know that God is merciful though. God is merciful and long suffering, but the time comes when we have to realize that we just need to be obedient to him very important don't play with God we do not play with him because he is we reverence him we fear him you know we don't play with God it's too serious Jeremiah 10 and 23 says I know that the determination of the weight of a man is not in himself it is not in a man even in a strong man or in a man in his best to direct his own steps so we can fathom the thoughts of what we want to do, but our steps are ordered by the Lord. Remember that, that's scripture too. By, the Bible teaches, the, no, Bible teachers talk grace. Everybody loves when you want to talk about the good stuff. Ooh, the Lord's going to bless you when he a loving God and he's kind and he this and he's going to give you this and he's going to open up the windows of heaven and he's going to give you all these blessings. But listen to this. Bible teachers talk grace. Everybody loves them. When they teach how much God loves people in the midst of their messes, everybody loves them. But love, but love them even more and appreciate them when they speak about obedience. So when they speak about all these good things, the grace, you know, the mercy, the blessings, we love the, the preachers and the teachers. Because, you know, that's what people want to hear. You know, you get the most feedback when you're giving, giving, when you're preaching and teaching that. I know that for sure, you know, because people want to hear that. But when you talk about obeying God, repenting, turning away from the things that you used to do and falling in line with what God wants you to do, the will for his life. That's what people don't want to hear. People don't want to hear they got to change their ways. You know, some people been the same way for 20, 30 years. It's just, that's just the way I am. And I'm just going to live like this. And that's, that's nothing but the enemy. That's so much negativity. But we know that God's way is the best way. And as we see here, you know, we up here preachers and teachers and we giving this good, you know, grace and mercy. And he's going to forgive you and he's going to come in and save the day. And you, when you get through with that, guess what? You got to obey him. You have to do what he says. That's the best thing going for you. And people don't really want to hear that. But that's what's going to save you. That's what's going to get you in heaven. That's what's going to get you to victory. Because you don't want to just win. You want total victory when you're walking with God. Because it is available to you if you're obedient. And most people don't want to do that. They just want to do enough to get in heaven. You want to win. You know, you, you want to, excuse me, more than win. You want to be victorious. You want to go past winning. When it gets you in heaven, you want to be victorious. You want to have everything that God says, that's yours. You know, everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to us. We're heirs now. We're joint heirs. So get it. You know, get it. If you don't have a good mix of all God's word, you will get out of balance and get in trouble. So again, when, the, when we're up preachers and teachers and we're talking about grace and we're talking about mercy and we're talking about the blessings... You also want to hear about how angry God gets. You know, he has feelings, you know, and he gets tired too. And he wants us to obey him. And he wants us to stop doing what we want to do. He wants you to put those cigarettes down. He wants you to stop watching that porn. He wants you to stop cheating. He wants you to stop committing adultery. You know, those type of things. When God says, stop, 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 stop. You know, and I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to do this. And I do this. And I do that. You got to have a mixture of both or you'll be off balance. So you got to know what's right and what's wrong at the same time. So you got to know the good and the bad together. Really, it's all good, you know. But when you got to change, you think in the, in the beginning, it's kind of like the uncomfort makes you think it's a bad thing. 
We don't have the ability to run our own lives. We don't. We think we do. We think we, because of certain attributes that we have from God. You know, we think we do, but we don't. So we don't have the ability to run our own lives in our best interest. Only God knows what is best for us in the long run. Know that. Let that sink in. Even with God's help, you still could make your own, make your plan work. So even with God's help, you still could make your own plan work. Jeremiah said that it is not in a man, not even a strong man, to direct his own steps. We are not capable of running our own lives. We need God's wisdom and guidance as well as his strength and power. So we should listen to what he has to say. God is looking for people who will demonstrate the glory of his presence in their lives. This is who God is looking for. God is looking for the person that is willing. Now, let me tell you something about that. You know, don't think that God is going to sit around and wait on you to do what he says or to get your act together. Because he's going to go right on by you and go to the next person that's willing to do what he says. And everything that God promised you, he's going to allow you to see somebody else with it. So don't take God for a joke, you know, and don't think he's going to wait on you to fall in line. You're just a special so-and-so. We all are special in God's eyes. He doesn't love one more than the other. So when it, when it's your turn and the Lord is telling you, this is what you need to do, fall in line and be obedient. Or he will allow you to see somebody else with the very exact thing that he promised you. And that's a hard pair of shoes to be in. And again, God is looking for people who will demonstrate the glory of his presence in their lives. God needs disciples that are examples. He wants our lives to be examples to those that need, that are, that are coming behind us, that need that same healing, that same breakthrough, that, want, that need to know this same God that we know. So he needs our lives to be examples of his glory, to draw souls in unto him. They will be people who obey him. They will obey him. We will obey him in every little thing, from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. Everything that he says. And obedience becomes easier the more you do it. You know, you begin to be obedient to the Father. Surrender, surrender unto him. Do what he says. The more you do it, the more easier it becomes. That's with anything. Especially with obedience. And remember, it's the same thing with disobedience. So we want to make sure, again, that we find some balance. We want to do the right thing. And we want to know what's right and what's wrong. Um... They will be people who obey him in every little thing. Obedience keeps us from defiling our conscience and keeps us living for God's glory. Isaiah 11 and 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. We know that this is a prophecy about Jesus, but if the Spirit of Jesus is dwelling in us and living through us, then we will enjoy all that is upon him. We will have wisdom. We will have understanding, counsel, might, and knowledge. Problems dissolve in the presence of these virtues because we know how to handle them. Because we're just like we have what Jesus has. And we once we have him, and again, Isaiah 11 and 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. We need that. Remember, 2021, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We don't have to wait years to understand something if we are obedient to, to the leading of the Spirit. We don't have to wait a long time. All we got to do is be obedient, be led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. The Lord will give us quick counsel and might if we are reverential, reverential and submissive towards Him. He will never judge us by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. That's Isaiah 11 and 23. And again, he will never judge us by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the, by the hearing of his ears. That's important. People who want to have understanding, who wants to hear from God, who wants to have wisdom and knowledge, imparted to them must have reverential fear and awe of God 
so important. So important. We have to have fear of God. He doesn't want us to um, be afraid, afraid of him. But there is a part of us that should fear him as being God. You know, like I said, God is not a joke. He is not to be, you know, played with. Um, it's just not like when people have names with God in them. I just think that it's so disrespectful because there is only one God. You know, so we want to be, we want to reverence him as he is. He's God. And there is only one God. He is the God. He's the big God. Like, ain't no way around him. You know, it's just him. There is no, he's God. So again, people who want to have understanding, who wants to hear from God, who wants to have wisdom and knowledge imparted to them, must have reverential fear in all of God. Reverential fear is to know that God is God and that he means business. Let me tell you something. God could wipe us out right now. The entire earth, everybody on it. And he don't owe nobody nothing. He don't have to explain nothing that he does. He's God. He means business. He is not to be taken lightly. So we need to have reverential fear of him because he is, you know, and don't play, you know, with it. God is very serious. As generous as he is and loving kind, kind, loving and kind as he is, he is not a joke. He is not a joke at all. He has called us his friends, even his sons and daughters. We went from friends to being sons and daughters. But we're to respect him and honor him with reverential obedience. So we are to respect and honor him and we are to obey him. Obey him. If we want to hear from God, we need to reverence him. If we want understanding, we need to be desperate to hear from him. Be determined to not live in disobedience. So let that be. And you're not going to do everything right. The Lord knows that we're not going to do everything right. That's why he sent Jesus. So now we're living under grace. But he wants you to do the best that you can to the best of your abilities. Because he knows what we're capable of. He knows what's too much for us. Scripture says, excuse me, that he won't put more on us than we can bear. And scripture also says in the time of trouble that he will give us an escape route. So he always has a plan for us. He just wants us to obey him. Obey him. And when you fall short, repent. Apologize to God and turn from what you've done and turn from disobedience to to obedience. You know, you want to turn from sin and we want to follow God. And this is in closing in this. People are concerned about the specific will of God for their life, wondering what he wants. He wants them to do. Lord, should I take this job? Or do you want me to take another job? God wants to give us that kind of specific direction. But he is even more concerned about our obedience to his general will for our lives. If we are not obeying the guidelines he has already given us in his word, he will. it will be difficult to hear what he has to say about his specific will for us. Remember, if we are unwilling to hear in one area, so if you're unwilling to hear in one area, we may be unable to hear in others. So it's kind of off balance in Jesus' name. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this and we understand how important it is to keep our receiver, deceiver free on this journey. And we want to be able to hear from God. Again, the Lord said, my sheep will know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So that is scripture. Know your God. You can never know too much about God. God is big. He's huge. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's everything. Scripture says we can't even hide from him. Like he's just that big of a God. There's nothing we can hide from him. He knows everything about us. And to me, that's a great thing because knowing who God really is, I need him to know everything about. I want him to know everything about me so that he can continue to meet me where I am so that I can continue to do the work that I need to do that is led by the Holy Spirit so that I can get where I need to be on earth and fulfill my purpose here on earth 
and get to heaven and be able to serve and rejoice and be with the Lord. So keep that in mind on the journey. If you guys have any, my website will be finished soon. Um, if you guys want to sow into the ministry, um, I will have at the end of this video, I will post my um, cash app on there. You know, if you want to be a blessing, if you want to sow a seed, you can do so. Any prayer requests sent to my ministry's email, Powerhouse Ministry 2020 at yahoo.com. You guys stay tuned for the next video because these two videos together are very, very dynamic. This entire chapter of 12 is very, very, very important. So make sure that you get all this information in and don't just take it in, apply it to your everyday life. It's one thing to get information, but once you get it and you keep it, you know, that's one thing, but you want to activate it and you want to apply it to your life. In Jesus' name, stay prayerful on the journey. This is Minister Williams, and I'm out.